In this video, I'm going to go over some basics of probability. The first thing we want to answer is, what is probability? I'm sure that many of you have heard this word before. You think about the probability of you know, flipping a coin as 50-50, and that's usually a common term. But what we want to think about with probability is that it is a numerical value, so it's a number, that describes the likelihood of something occurring. So it's a numerical value that describes the likelihood of something occurring. Describes the likelihood of something occurring. That something could be an event. So let me let me just finish this because I can't. So numerical value that describes the likelihood of something occurring. So this could be the probability that it rains today. That's an event, potentially, the probability that it rains. Or the probability that over the next 20 years, I lose 30 pounds. Okay, so this is the we're putting a number value to a particular event or situation, and it's describing the likelihood of that, per that thing occurring. It's very related to percents. So there's a 30% chance or a 75% chance. All right, it's not a bad idea to connect the idea of probability and percent chance. However, there's multiple ways to present probability other than just percents. So on a number line, what we're going to do here is use a number line, and the number line is between 0 and 1. When we talk about a probability, probability is a numerical value and that numerical value is going to be between 0 and 1. If the probability of an event or something occurring is 0, it is impossible. It will not occur. So here, 0 is that it definitely won't occur. This will definitely not occur. The event will definitely not occur. Over here, this will definitely occur. So if there's a probability of 1, it is therefore certain. And we're just going to use the word certain. So 0 means it's impossible. It's definitely not going to occur. And certain for 1, that is a probability. Everything else in here are going to be numbers between 0 and 1. So if we split it right in half, if you have a probability of 0.5, that's the same thing as saying you have a 50% chance of occurring. Well, here, here's 0.75 probability. That's the same thing as 75% chance. So how can we present probability? Probability could be presented in decimal form between 0 and 1. So it could be presented as a decimal between 0 and 1, as we just saw up above. It could be written as a fraction. So for example, so let me put some colons in here. So 50%, 0 0.5, that is a 1 out of 2. All right, so one half probability, or it could be written as a percent. And that's what we have up there, the 50%. But just be careful. In most of these problems, if you're asked to calculate the probability, you want to have your answer as a decimal or a fraction. You see percents, and we want to connect percents to probability. But if I say, what's the probability of flipping a coin and getting tails, and you say 50%, Technically, I'm looking for a probability where you gave me a percent. We do want to connect them as being very much related, and they're describing the, describing the likelihood of an event occurring. But I wasn't asking for what's the percent chance. I was asking for the probability. So you should be putting that between 0 and 1. Here's an example, and this is a good example to illustrate and connect the ideas of percent, relative frequencies, and probability. So in a survey of 580 smokers, 234 claimed to have attempted quitting more than three times. What is the probability of randomly selecting one of these participants? Well, if there were 234 participants who claimed that they have attempted to quit more than three times, that's 234 out of 580. And we're just assuming that each person is equally as likely to be selected. So I could have asked this question, what percent is this? What percent of individuals claim to have attempted quitting more than three times? But I'm actually now phrasing it as, what's the probability 
of randomly selecting one of these participants. Well, there are 234 participants that would have a quote-unquote favorable outcome, where if I randomly selected an individual, 234 of them would be one of those individuals who qu attempted quitting more than three times, out of 580. So if I were to put this in the calculator, 234 divided by 580, you get and 0.4034482 dot dot dot. So we're going to say it's approximately 0 0.40. The probability of randomly selecting an individual who's attempted to quit smoking more than three times is approximately 0, or 0 0.40. So approximately 0 0.40. If I asked you what percent chance is this, what what percent chance is selecting, what percent chance is there to select a uh, person who attempted quitting more than three times, you would just change this into a percent by saying approximately 40%. So remember when we're talking about probability, it is a value between 0 and 1, 0 being it's not going to happen, 1 being it's certain, and it's describing the, it's describing the likelihood of an event occurring. Let's get into some more examples. In that last example, we had a nice worked out example for us. We knew the number of smokers. We knew the number who, uh, number of individuals who met a favorable, quote unquote, favorable outcome. But what if we're just given a blank problem and we need to figure those things out for us? And that's what we're going to see on this page. So the first thing we want to write down here is a formula that allows us to calculate the probability of an event. So the probability of an event, let's call this, and let me switch to my pen, the probability of an event, we're going to call this event A. So the probability of event A occurring will, equal, will be equal to the number of times A occurs, so the number of times, and we're going to say, quote, A occurs, and we're going to call that a fi the number of favorable outcomes divided by the number of elements in the sample space. And we didn't define sample space, but we're going to in one moment here. So the probability of an event A occurring, well, we can write this as a ratio of the number of times that A actually occurs, and we're going to divide that by the total number of elements in the sample space. You can think of the sample space here. The sample space is the total possible, that's the whole list of possible outcomes of a particular event or of a particular situation as well. Now, we've already seen these words unusual or unlikely, but we're going to attach that now to a number. Remember last week when we talked about creating a usual range, whether or not an observation was unusual or usual? Well, we're now going to attach a numerical value of 0.05. So what constitutes an unusual or unlikely event? If the probability of an event A is less than 0.05, then we're going to call that an unusual event, or it's unlikely to occur. So let's say I calculate the probability of me not eating dinner. Well, the probability of that is 0.02. Well, that's unlikely to occur because that's less than 0.05. So if there's a percent chance, if we were to relate this to percentage, if you have a 2% chance of something occurring, it's unlikely. Anything less than 5% or probability less than 0.05, we would consider to be an unlikely event. Now, obviously, we could change the threshold that is unusual or unlikely, but 0.05 is the one that we usually go to. Okay, so now that we have that out of the way, let's use this formula here to calculate the probability of this example. You roll a six-sided die. What is the probability of rolling a four? We want to first list the sample space and find the favorable outcomes. That's how we want to solve this. And I call this the sample space approach. We can always calculate the probability by listing out the sample space and looking for the favorable outcomes. The sample space is the set of observations that account for every possible outcome. So if we roll a six-sided die, what could we potentially see? Well, we could see a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, a 5, 
and a 6. These are the elements in the sample space. These are the possible outcomes of this particular experiment by rolling a die. So how many elements? Elements are separated by commas. So how many things are in the sample space? What is the total number of possible outcomes? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The number of elements in the sample space, which is the denominator, is 6. There are 6 elements in the sample space. There are 6 possible outcomes by rolling a 6-sided die. What I want to look for here, if I want to know the probability of rolling a 4, I want to look at, well, how many times does a 4 occur? What are the favorable outcomes? Well, if I change the color here to be blue, if you look at the sample space, the only one, there's only one, and that's this one right here. This is the only outcome that would be favorable, the number of times that this event 4 occurs, or excuse me, this outcome 4 occurs. So we look at 4. It occurs one time out of six possibilities. And that's it. So 1 divided by 6, that's going to give us approximately, if I were to round this to the hundredths place, approximately 0.17. The probability of rolling a 4 is approximately 0.17. This is what I call the sample space approach. If you can write out all the possible outcomes and look to encircle the ones that are favorable to the event that you're trying to describe, those outcomes are favorable or they match, we circle that, we look to see how many are circled out of the total, in this case one out of six. The problem is many of these examples and we talk about simple probability and we move on to compound probability, you're not always going to be able to create the sample space and list out all the possible combinations.